What's up, Metal Junkies? Frank here from Metal Injection with an exclusive report. Today we had the opportunity to sit down and speak with vocalist Tommy Vext, former frontman of the band Divine Heresy, whose controversial departure had left many questions lingering. Let's see what Tommy has to say about the incident this past weekend. Concerning my departure from Divine Heresy, um, well basically we were playing at the Chance of Poughkeepsie. There had been some concerns on the tour about Dino's toenail being infected and we had canceled the last two shows that were to proceed after the Metal Fest. Um, so everyone was kind of on edge about that and stressed out, which kind of sucked. But, you know, the show was good, there was a lot of kids there, and uh, the vibe was great. With Blood Comes Cleansing went on, they killed it, and Sworn Enemy, and we got up. So we went on, and uh, the show went off without a hitch. We were ready to go do our thing, we went out, we played, and then the PA went out uh, during about, about seven songs in. We play the full record uh, at our live show, so that's ten songs. There was no monitors, and it, there was no uh, vocals in front of house, so I was like, yo, I'm going to call the show. I don't want to ruin my voice for tomorrow. Uh, I've been looking forward to playing the New England Metal Fest, and I knew how important it was. Um, so I'd been training and working out every day and taking care of myself. And you know, for for me, it was an honor and a big opportunity um, to see how for for me to take the stage and help the band go to the next level. Um, and you know, I, I was I'm a huge Meshuggah fan. I was really excited to be playing on the same stage as them and ministry and and so on and so forth. The PA went out, and I asked the guys to. I, I asked the guys, you know, can we cut the set? We gotta cut the set. And Tim was like, okay, okay. And I was like, all right, uh, we'll play one more song. We let the crowd pick. I was like, what do you guys want to hear? And uh, we played Fail Creation, and the kids helped me sing, and um, basically, you know, kind of lip sync it, did the song, and then was like, okay, we're gonna go sign autographs. Thank you guys so much. Uh, and as I go to walk outside the stage. Dino starts playing uh, Royal Blood Heresy. So I look at Tim, I'm like, what? Okay, whatever. There's nothing I can do about it now. So I grab the mic, and I, and I finish the last song. And then on the side of the stage, I, I was like, listen, before we get off the stage, we have to agree that we're not going to play without each other anymore. And Dino's response to that was, hey, well, we played with Joe without Joe last night in Louisville, Kentucky. And this is where the diuretic remark comes from. Joe got sick on stage and walked off stage for the last song in a similar situation and I didn't want to continue playing the show and I was like alright we don't play without him and again Dino pulled the same thing and stood right in the middle in the front of the stage and started playing the last song by himself so we were all forced to just jump in and continue on which I thought was wrong and you know I thought that was a great disrespect to Joe and I wanted to nip the problem in the bud right then and there. Uh, and I said, we sh we're not playing without Tim, we don't play without you, and we don't play without Joe. I'm like, it's not cool for you to just do that to me. And uh, what uh, my remark, which got Dino in a fit of rage, was that I said, this isn't the Dino Kazara show, we're a band. And which Dino got in my face and was like, well, you're just going to have to fucking deal with that shit, Tommy. And he got in my face, and I, I just reacted, and I pushed him. You know, I'm a pretty strong guy. You know, I don't like any, I didn't want to have any kind of conversation and I wanted everything to be verbally settled so we can move on and go to the next show. And unfortunately it didn't happen like that. But I stood up for myself. And uh, I've been, you know, suffering the indignities of Dino's massive ego for as long as I've worked with him. And unfortunately everything, you know, I've heard about him had, had eventually come to fruition. And he is exactly who he's been portrayed as by his ex-band members. And this happening now is the same reason why he's not in Fear Factor anymore. It was a stepping stone in my life, and I'm moving on. And I was just going to let everything be. And this childish slander is just beneath me. And I'm like, Dino, you're a 45-year-old man. Like, when are you going to grow up? Every night I go on stage and I tell the audience and the kids that they don't have to live their lives having someone point a finger down at them and tell them that they should feel like shit about who they know they are. And I try to, you know, be a role model to kids to stand up for what's right and for them to be allowed to be who they are. And, you know, more recently at shows, I started to realize that 
I was talking about myself. And I didn't want to live my life and have the career that I was having under, under his tyrannical rule and his abusive mentality. And I'm just not going to stand for that. And I hope that my actions warrant some kind of courage in Joe and Tim, because I love those guys. And it's very unfortunate that I'm not there to stick up for them anymore. Dino has pushed around Tim physically, verbally, and emotionally, as well as Joe, as long as they've been working with him. And they're willing to put up with it because they look at Dino as a meal ticket, potentially. And I just really want to play good music. And I was go you know, I've been going up on stage and doing what I do, and for the longest time, I just, there wasn't, I didn't love it anymore. I could, I get nauseous. The only, the only intestinal problems I have is from being in a van with the guy I happen to sit next to him for 10 hour drives while he gossips and talks shit about all of my friends in other bands. You know, I hope they find another singer and I really feel sorry for whoever comes into the next project because it takes a very, very strong person to work with this man. Yeah, there's, I mean, since I moved to Los Angeles, I've been like, under rules. He kicks everyone out of the band every week. And it's just like, it's not a band. And the idea and the image behind it, I feel guilty for selling because it is the Dino Cazares show. And I, I had been fighting against that for a long time. And, you know, they, there were issues of me not being allowed to be friends with anyone in Fear Factory because we sit, we hang out at the same social places in Los Angeles. And just all kinds of strange things. Um, you know, I was living on the streets homeless and and I was couch surfing with friends trying to get the demo done and, and doing what I was doing. And he was calling people and telling them to kick me out because he thought that it would make it too easy on me. Like he had the right to make my life harder than it already was. After I moved from New York City to Los Angeles with $100 and a bag full of clothes and, and with the mentality that I was going to make it, he's rich. His dad gave him $10,000 when he was 18 years old. You know what I'm saying? He, he's never had to struggle. He doesn't know. Hunger. Basically, I've just been demoing and uh, working on some songs with a few of the guitar players, uh, one being Mark Rizzo from Soulfly and uh, the new Cavalera Conspiracy, and the other being Doc Coyle from uh, the New Jersey metal bass band, God Forbid. Uh, I've also been working on stuff with uh, Ken Shalk, who used to be the drummer of Candiria. And, um, you know, I'm just waiting for everyone's availability and trying to get something together. And, you know, I just, I'm just gonna continue the legacy of what I do. I live it and I love it, and this is what I am. This is all I know, but I want to do it right. I want to do it on my own terms, and and, that, and that's it. And yeah, that's. I don't know what else to say about it. And I hope everybody in Devon Heresy is happy and healthy and well off. And I really have no ill will towards them. I just don't. You know, it's like working with a company. Then you, it's time when you know it's time to move on. You move on. You know, I just, it felt like a sinking ship for a long time, the way business was handled and the way people treat each other in the band. There's, there's no respect, but this isn't the last that you've seen of me, so.